right, so looking at our site guide. Look, I did all that and I didn't make sure I was ready. All right, so statistical or non-statistical, number one says, who was the first president of the United States? That has one question. There's one person that was the first president, so that is no, that is non-statistical. Number two says, what are the admission prices to each of the state parks in Kentucky? This is not just one state park. That could be multiple answers, so we're going to say yes. That is statistical. Number three says, what is the height of the tallest slide? That's one slide that's tall. So no, that is not statistical. How much time do the students in my school spend on the internet? So this is a bunch of different students. They probably spend different amount of time. So yes, that is statistical. When it says how many girls are in your class, that would be like me asking you right now. How many girls are in your class? You'll count them. That's one number, one answer. So no, that is not statistical. How many leaves did each branch have? Each branch will not have the same leaves. So yes, that has multiple answers. It's statistical. Number seven, I'm not going to lie, guys. This one tricked me. I had to actually re-answer it. It says, how many presidents were under 50 when inaugurated? That's one amount. So you're going to count up how many presidents were under 50, like right now, and you would answer that with one number. So no, that is not statistical because there's only one answer. How many times did you eat lunch this month? That's asking you a specific question. Count it up. One answer. So, no, it is not statistical. How many apps do my classmates have on their phone? I'm sure that everyone in here has different amounts of apps on their phone, so that's different answers. So, yes, it is statistical. And then how many branches does the oak tree have? This is asking about one tree. So that's going to be one answer, so that is no, not statistical because it's one answer. All right? The next ones are finding the mean, to, and it says to round the nearest tenth. So for number 11, this would be a calculator problem that we could use. So we're going to do 6, 6 plus 15 plus 16 plus 20 plus 13 plus 5 plus 10 plus 16. Since it's just asking me the one thing, I'm just adding them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why do I need to know how many there are? Braden? Yeah, so we added them up, and I'm just going to make sure that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to divide by eight and get my answer. It says to round to the nearest tenth if I need to. So that 6 is going to stay where it is since 2 doesn't make it go up. So I get 12.6 on number 11. All right. Number 12, same thing. We'll add them up. 19 plus 5 plus 9 plus 12. That's a 10 plus 10 plus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do you see how I'm looking back at my calculator to make sure they match? Okay. Equals, and then we're dividing this by 6, so we get 10. Number 13, 12 plus 18 plus 5 plus 8 plus 15 plus 2 plus 9 plus 17 plus 1. Again, I'm going to check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 numbers divided by 9 gives me 9.7 here because that would be a 6 repeating, but remember a 6 would round up the other 6 to a 7. All right, so now 16 plus 12 plus 18 plus 17 plus 16 plus 8 plus 7 plus 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Enter, then divide by 8. I got 12. Hopefully this mean stuff is coming back to us. We're just adding and dividing. All right, um, 14 plus 16 plus 11 plus 2 plus 9 plus 6 plus 6 plus 15 plus 2 plus 11. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to divide that by 9. I got 9.2 repeating. Is 2 going to round up? No. No, so my answer will just be a 9.2. All right, the next one says we need to do this on notebook paper. So I'm getting out a piece of paper to work out number 16. And number 16 is asking for the mean, median, mode, and range. So since I'm having to do more than just one thing, what do I want to do first with these numbers on 16? Do you remember Malachi? We want to put them in order. Very good. So for 16, let's see, we have 4, then 17, 19, 20, and 20. And we're going to start with our mean. So I'm going to add those up. I have 5. There were 5 in my list. 4 plus 17 plus 19 plus 20 plus 20. I got 80, and I'm dividing that by... Five. So for my mean, I get 16. The median, how do I find the median? Should be the one in the middle. After they're in order, guys, I couldn't pick my median here where it says 20. I have to pick it where it's in order. So my median is 19. The mode is the one there the most. So I'm going to go with 20. It's there more than the others. And then we've also got to do the range. To do the range, we're going to subtract the biggest minus the smallest. So 20 minus 4 is 16. So that would be my range. Okay. I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to slide it up. So now I'm going to look at number 17. All right. The first thing I would do is probably on this chart write my numbers in just so it's easier to look at. So for drama, I'm seeing a 1 there. For comedy, 4. For action, five. Romance, I see six. For sci-fi, that looks like that's going over at four as well. Okay, so I'm going to list them in order over here. So one, four, four, five, and six. Mean. You got to add them up and divide. So one plus four plus four plus five plus six. I get 20, divide that by 5, gives me 4. The median, again, it's the one in order. Not necessarily on the chart, but once I've written them out, biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest, so I get 4. My mode, what's my mode here? 4. And then my range, I would do 6 minus 1, which equals 5. Um, what if nothing repeated? What would I put for the mode if nothing repeated? Um, Maggie? No mode. And you will see that, I think, on one on your nine weeks test. Okay? All right, so I'm going to flip it over directly onto the back here. All right, so again, we're finding the mean, median, mode, range. This time we're also doing the LQ, the UQ, the IQR, and the mean absolute deviation. Whew, we got a lot to do on this one. So, again, I'm still going to do this on my own paper. All right. Um, I think that's supposed to be an 18 right there. So, let's see. Number 18. Number 18. Putting those in order. Let's see. 21. And remember, once you write it in order, if you want to mark it out, since there's more numbers here, I'd probably do that. So, 21. 32. Thirty-five and thirty-nine, fifty-eight and seventy-five. All right, so I'm going to list out everything we're doing. We're doing the mean, the median, the mode, the range. We're also doing the LQ, the UQ the IQR, and the mean absolute deviation. So that's a lot of good stuff to go back over. All right, so mean, hopefully we know from the last few problems we've done, we're going to add them up. 21, 32, 35, 39, 58, 75. And we're dividing by 6. 
If I got 43.333, I'm just going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So 43.3. So my median, what happens when I try to find the middle here? What do you notice happens when I'm trying to find the middle? Julia? In between 39 and 35. So what am I going to do since I have two numbers there? Jordan? Add them and divide by 2. So we're doing 35 plus 39. Get my answer. I got 74. And I'm going to divide that by 2, which gives me 37. Is 37 in the middle of this? Yeah, so always double check just to make sure your number makes sense. So 37 is what we need. The mode. No mode. Is there anything that repeats there? No, so no mode. My range, we're going to do the 75 minus 21. So I get 54. We get 54. I'm going to pause this for a moment because the next thing we real loud. All right, so continuing on to number 18. Um, so we have our median. I've drawn my line. My LQ, remember LQ is just the lower quartile, but it's the number in the middle. So if I look at the small side, 32 is in the middle. So 32 is my LQ. Same thing, UQ is on the upper side, so the big numbers in the middle. I have 58. My IQR is kind of like the range here. We're doing big minus small, but I'm doing the Qs. So I'm doing the big Q, which is 58, minus the small Q, which is 32. And 58 minus 32 should give me 26. So there's my IQR. All right. Mean absolute deviation. This one is probably the hardest thing. Fortunately, your nine-week test is multiple choice, so that should help a little bit. But what we're doing for our mean absolute deviation, remember we have our mean. We subtract it from each number. And then we find our mean again. All right? So my mean, we already found out, was 43.3. And I need to subtract it from each number. So, on my calculator, I'm going to do 21 minus 43.3, and it gave me a negative number. I just want to kind of show that. It gave me this negative. I'm not worried about the negative. I'm just going to write down the number. Okay, so I'm just going to write down 22.3, and then I'm going to do it for the next number. So, it was 32. So, we're going to do 32 minus my mean, 43.3. Ethan, will you open the door, please? All right, that gave me 11.3. Now I'm going to do 35. 35 minus 43.3. That gave me 8.3. Hopefully this sounds a little familiar. It's been a long time since we've done it. 39 minus 43.3 gives me 4.3. And again, you'll notice every time, even if it has a negative on my calculator, I'm just ignoring that. 58 minus 43.3, which is 14.7. And then 75 minus 43.3 gives me 31.7. Okay, so these are my new numbers that I have. And now I'm going to find the mean from these numbers. So that means I've got to add them up and divide by how many there are. Something I want to point out, my median was in the middle. The number that I found in the middle, I didn't use it because it wasn't in my original list. Just remember that, okay? All right, so I'm going to add these all up. 22.3 plus 11.3, plus 8.3, plus 4.3, plus 14.7, plus 31.7. And again, remember you can scroll back, just double check, make sure we type that in right. Okay. Enter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm dividing that by 6 now. So divided by 6. And I get this repeating decimal. We're just going to round to the tenth. So we're going to do 15.4 is my mean here. Okay, and that is my mean absolute deviation. That would be the mad number that I would need. All right? Okay, so you'll 
So you can see here 16, 17, 18. This is a new class. We are. Let's move on. I want you to look at 19 with me. So if you'll make sure you have your own paper to do number 19 because we have to do everything it says up here. Step one on 19, because I've got to do a bunch of stuff with all those numbers. What do I need to do first to those numbers? Maya? Put them in order. So we're going to do one, three, and I'm going to mark them out so I don't repeat any that aren't there. One, three, five, six, eight, and nine. And again, remember guys, if you get behind or if you get lost, this video is going online um, so we can follow it. All right, 19, it asked me to do a lot of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and write everything down. It wants the mean. It wants the median. It wants the mode, the range, the LQ, the UQ, the IQR, and the mean absolute deviation, which we just did in that last problem. That's a lot of stuff I have to remember. On Thursday or Friday, depending on which one you decide to take your test on, the test is going to ask you to find each of those, and it's going to be labeled for each problem which one you're doing. And you come up and ask me, Ms. Sawyer, how do you do the mean absolute deviation? I can't tell you on test day. Now's when I can tell you. So now's our time to ask questions if we have them, all right? So we're going to start with just the mean, basic mean. Just means add them up, divide by how many numbers there are. So we're going to do 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 8 plus 9. When I add them up, I got 32. I'm dividing that by 6. And I got 5.3 repeating, so I'm just going to put 5.3 because we're always going to round to the tenth. My median, when I look in the middle, what do y'all notice? That there's, uh, no number. there's no number in the middle. So basically, I'm just going to find what's in between these. Some of you can look at this and go, well, I know what's in the middle of 5 and 6. But if I don't know, what can I do to find what's in the middle? Trip? Add them up, so 5 plus 6 equals 11. And what am I dividing by? 2. Two. And that gives me 5.5. Guys, always think about that. Is 5.5 in between 5 and 6? Yes. yes. All right, the mode. The mode is what appears the most. Are there any numbers here that appear more than others? No. So we would just write no mode. My range, big number, which is 9 minus the small number, 1 gives me 8. All right, LQ. LQ is like the median, but I'm on the low side. Kelsey, what's my LQ? Three, because it's in the middle on the low side. Hunter, what's my UQ? Eight. Eight. It's in the middle on the big side. IQR. It's the range, but instead of doing the range for these numbers, I'm doing the range for my Qs. So I'm going to do the big Q, which is eight, minus the little Q, which is three. three. When I subtract those, I get Five. So my IQR is 5. All right. Mean absolute deviation. This is the one that takes forever. The mean, then we subtract, and then I do the mean again. So my mean was 5.3. You'll see I'm just writing that number in. I got it already. Now I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to start with 1 minus 5.3. You can see that's what I'm typing in my calculator. It gives me a negative. Do I want the negative? No, I'm just going to write down 4.3. And now I'm going to do the next number. 3 minus 5.3. And I get 2.3. Next number is 5 minus 5.3. And I get 0 0.3. And it says 6 minus 5.3 which gives me 0 0.7, 8 minus 5.3, 2.7, and 9 minus 5.3, 3.7. Okay? So now I need to find the mean of those numbers. So 4.3 plus 2.3 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 plus 2.7 plus 3.7. There is only one mean absolute deviation problem on your test, guys, if that makes you feel any better because it's taking a long time. So I get 14. What am I dividing that by? 
six because there were six numbers. So I got 2.3 repeating, and I'm just writing that as 2.3. And remember, that was my mean absolute deviation. I can also just write it here so it's easy to see. On the test, you will have two parts of the test. The first part will be like you're adding positive and negatives, your fractions, your stuff that we did without a calculator. Then you'll turn that into me, and then I will give you the second part, and I will also give you a calculator to use in class. So you won't have to worry about bringing yours that day. It'll be kind of like when we do testing, I'll have one for you so that you'll be able to do the second part with a calculator. And when you finish the second part, you will bring the test, the calculator, and everything back to me as well. Okay? Good question, Hunter. All right. Number 20. Number 20 is our last one where we've got to do all of these things. So number 20 we have, I'm going to go ahead and write them in order. I know it's hard for me to get them both up here at the same time. All right. So let's see, I have 6, then 7, and I'm going to mark them out as I do them so I don't use any. And then I have two 8s, so 8 and 8. And then three nines. Okay. So there's number 20. Somewhere. There it is. Okay. There's number 20. All right. And we're doing our mean, median, mode, range. I'm going to have to pause again because I think we're changing classes again. UQ. Um, remember, if you want to take the test on Thursday, when do you have to have this done by? Thursday. Thursday. If you are here Friday, when can you take the test? Friday. Friday, and you need your study guide done then. I would do it on Thursday. You do it on Friday. Recording again. All right, so for number 20, I've written the problems in order. And now we're going to find the mean. To find the mean, we're just going to add them up. So 6 plus 7 plus, sorry, 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9. Then we're dividing that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by 7. And I got 8 as my mean. My median is the one in the middle after they're in order. So I can't look at the problems that were on the worksheet. i got to look at them in order. So my median was 8. My mode here, 8 repeats, but 9 repeats. More, so my mode is 9. My range is 9 minus 6, so I get 3. My LQ, there's my mean on the lower side. You'll see I have three numbers. In the middle on the low side is 7. In the middle on the high side is 9. My IQR, now it's the range of the Q, so I'm subtracting those two Qs. 9 minus 7 is 2. Mean absolute deviation. This is the one that is literally the worst because it takes so much work. I'm actually going to draw a line and kind of go all the way down here. All right, because we're going to do our mean. Then we have to subtract. And then we're going to do the mean again with those new numbers. The mean that I got was 8. And when I say subtract, I'm subtracting it from every number. So the first number was 6. If I use my calculator, 6 minus 8 is It'll tell me negative 2, but do I want the negative? No, we're just going to write down 2. 7 minus 8 is 1. 8 minus 8 is 0. Do I have to use the zeros? Addison, question? I'm aware. All right, then we're going to do the next one. Well, if I move it up, then you can't see these numbers. and So, so then we're going to have 8 minus 8 again. I'm going to write 0 again. 9 minus 8 is? 1, 9 minus 8 is 1, and 9 minus 8 is 1. So I have to have all three of those written in. Now I'm going to do the mean for these numbers. So 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0, still adding those in, 1, 1, and 1. So that's where I'm adding them up. When I get my answer, what am I dividing it by? 7, because there were 7, prob seven numbers, and I get 8.857. Da, 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 da. So we're going to round that to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to put 0 0.89. That would round to 0. Point, not 89, just 0 0.9. So my MAD is 0 0.9 in that list. All right, Caitlin, will you shut my door, please? 
All right, that was number 20. So let's look and see what's going on now. Number 21 on our sheet here. Um, it says, what is the median? So guys, it gives me a list, but there was X's. So I need to write those out. So I'm going to do one, two. How many twos are there? Three, because there are three X's. Then we have four, four, seven, eight, eight, and nine. When I'm finding the median, so I'm going to cover them up, working my way to the inside. My median, I get two fours. What's in the middle of two fours? Four. So my median is four. It says, what percent is less than two? Okay, y'all, this is, mark that problem out. That should have a box and whisker plot. Ignore number 22. That's not a good question. Ignore number 22. All right. So let's look at number 23 because we do have a box and whisker plot here. And let's answer some questions about it. It says, what score is the upper quartile? So which line is that talking about? Is that talking about a whisker line or a box line? Kelsey? The upper quartile. Mm, this is the smallest number. This is the biggest number, not the biggest quartile. The biggest quartile is that line is the biggest part of the box. Does that make sense? So we're looking at the largest line on the box, which is 85. What is the range? So I'm doing my biggest number, which is 100 minus 55. So I get 45 is my range. The median is that line in the middle of the box. And remember when I'm saying the middle of the box, it might not be exactly in the center, but it's just a line going through the middle somewhere. My median was 75. What percent is between 70 and 85? So what percent of my data is in this box here? Does anyone remember? Davis? 50%. 50% is the box, 50% is the whiskers. Each piece is what percent? 25. So it's like this is 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, and 25%. Excellent. What percent are between 85 and 100? So if I look just between 85 and 100, how much is that? 25%. Okay. Excellent. Let's move it on down, looking at number 28. How many, how many students had test scores higher than 70? So there's 70, so I'm looking at the test scores bigger than that. So how many are in this first bar? 12. Then it says 8. And then it says 2. So if I add those together, how much is that? 22. Excellent. How many scored between 81 and 90? So that's just talking about between 81 and 90. How many students is that? Just 8. It's just talking about that one bar. How many students scored less than 91? So now I'm talking about all of these that were smaller than 91. So I have my 8 and my 12. This looks like 5 and 3. So 8 and 12 is 20. And then 5 and 3 would give me 28. Okay. Awesome. All right. Stem and leaf. So let's do a stem and a leaf. <laughs> well, I love Miss Donahue. Just want to say that, Miss Donahue. All right, so we need to make a cinnamon leaf. This isn't a very good. This isn't very good information to make a cinnamon leaf, is it? What's wrong with this information? Go ahead, Addison. They're all one digit. So what stem does a one digit number have? Zero. And then after that, I would have my one for the tens numbers. So let's look at our zero. Let's put them in order. So I have zero, 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 one, because that's just the number one. Zero, one, just the number one. Two, two. Three, how many threes are there? One, two, three, four, five. And then we have two fours and four. So that's a really long leaf there. Lots of leaves on that one branch. All right, and then for one, what number needs to go by it? Just two, because that would make a 12. One and two put an X to get each other. All right, so there's my stem and leaf. Looks a little goofy. Now we need to do a box and a whisker. 
All right. Um, for my box, remember, we need the median, the LQ, and the UQ, right? So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 4, and then 12. So I'm going to work my way to the inside to find my median, covering one up at a time. Very carefully covering up one up at a time. I end up right there in the middle. What number would be my median? If it's three and three, three is the only thing in the middle. So above three, I'm going to put a bar because that's the middle of my box. My LQ, looking in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I should be at that one right there is in the middle. LQ, my UQ, one, two, three, four, five, six, is that three? So guys, my UQ is in the same spot. So am I going to actually have a line in the middle here? No, so we're going to kind of connect those. Guys, sorry, this is not a very excellent problem. My whisker goes out to zero, and my big whisker goes out to 12. On the test, they come out really nice. Like, box and whisker look the way they should look. This doesn't look right because my median and my UQ were the same number. So that's why it looks so bad. All right. Whew. Flipping it over. All right. So now I'm getting into some dimensional analysis, but we're going to start that in just a little bit. I'm going to pause my recording again. Okay, looking at these first couple examples. So the first ones are just to kind of remind you of how to set them up. Um, so we're given that we want to change four yards, so that goes on top. We're going to do times in a fraction bar. If yards is what we're changing, yards goes on the bottom. Feet's what we want to change it to, feet go on the top. From our measurements that we've learned this year, we know that one yard is equal to three feet. So we put one with yards, three with feet. Remember that makes those go away, so I have feet in my answer, which is what we want. On the top, it says 4 times 3, which is 12. On the bottom, there's just a 1, and 12 over 1 is just 12. So here, I'm going to do 32 cups times. I'm going to put my cups on the bottom, my fluid ounces on the top. And 1 cup equals, is it 16 fluid ounces or 8 fluid ounces? I think it's 16. I want to say it's 16. All right, um, so when I multiply those now, I'm going to look back through my pitch real quick. Now I'm nervous. I'm hearing all. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Fluid ounces. It is eight. It is eight fluid ounces. You are incorrect. It is eight. All right, so this should be eight fluid ounces of one cup. So now we can do 32 times 8, which gives us 256 over 1. Remember, those cups go away, so my answer is 256. If this was a fraction and it stayed a fraction, we would just simplify. Ladies, you can listen, lay your head down, but we're not talking across the room, please. Okay? All right, um, I'm going to kind of go through these kind of quickly, hopefully. So we have 10 gallons times gallons on the bottom quarts on the top. So I know that in one gallon there are four quarts. Right? King gallon has four queens. Yes. So my gallons go away, leave me with quarts, so I get 40 quarts there since it's just a one on the bottom. Alright, on number two, now number two is different because it does have a fraction there. I'm still going to put that measurement, my miles on top. Miles goes on the bottom, yards goes on the top. Alright, in one mile, there are 1,728 yards, I believe. Let me double check. Okay, on that one. Okay, so that's 1,760. 1,760. I don't know why it's 28. I just made up a number there. All right, so now when I multiply, guys, 1 times 1,760 is that number. 5 times 1 is 5. 
So now in my calculator, I can type that in as a fraction, 1760 fraction button 5, or you can use the division. But when I type that in, trying to get to where we can see it, you can see I get 352 as my answer. Yes, Angel? So that might be something that you want to study because these are kind of hard. All right, so I have three pounds, three LB times, putting my pounds on the bottom, ounces on the top. Um, I know that... Hmm? One ounce equals 16 pounds, or is it one pound equals 16 ounces? One pound equals 16 ounces sounds better, right? One pound equals 16 ounces. Again, yep, we're good there. Y'all y'all are good. All right, so my pounds go away. Leave me with ounces. Three times 16 should give me 48. All right, looking at the next one, hopefully I can remember these. So, oh, you good, it's pounds and ounces again. So eight pounds times pounds on the bottom, ounces on the top. Remember, it's one pound equals 16 ounces. So I'm going to have eight times 16 here, which is 256, I believe. Nope, 128. I'm just doing some random math in my head, apparently. 128. Leave me with those ounces. All right, number five. Now, this one we do have to be careful. I have a mixed number here, so we want to change that to where I just have a top and bottom. So 3 times 7 is 21, plus 5, 26 over 7. My mile stays on the top, so I can put miles on the bottom. All right, so miles go away. Oh, one mile equals 5,280 feet. I know that one's good. All right, so on the top, I have 26 times 5,280 which is a really large number, 137280 over 7. So I'm going to type in 137280. And I am going to use the fraction button here with 7. And when it does that, it gives me a decimal, so I'm just going to write that decimal there. So we got 19611. That's 19,611 point, rounding it to the tenth, 4. All right, 64 ounces times ounces on the bottom, pounds on the top, one pound equals 16 ounces. So you can see here we end up with 64 over 16, which should divide evenly, and we get four. 215 feet. I'm wanting to change that to yards. So feet goes on the bottom, yards goes on the top. Number one yard equals three feet. So I end up with 215 with three on the bottom. 215 with three on the bottom. I'm going to make that a fraction. So again, using my fraction button, 215, fraction button three, and it gives me 71 and two thirds. You can see that I will still get a fraction. 71 and two thirds, just typing that in with the fraction button instead of division. <coughs> 41 pints, changing pints to quarts. One quart equals two pints. Remember, each queen has two princes. All right, so then when I multiply that, on the top I get four, on bottom two, so four over two is two. All right. Number nine, Caitlin, we shut my door all the way. 3,000 pounds, putting pounds on the bottom, tons on top. Remember, one ton equals, is it 1,000 pounds or 2,000 pounds? 2,000, 2,000, okay, that's what I thought. 2,000 pounds. So when I multiply that, I'm going to end up with 3,000 over 2,000, which will be, I can type that into my calculator, 3,000, fraction button, 2,000. It gives me one and a half there. So one and a half tons. All right, 23 gallons. Hopefully this is coming back to us by now since we're about halfway through. Gallons on the bottom, quartz on top. One gallon equals four quarts, so I do four times 23, and that should give me 92. One third mile, remember one over three miles has to be on the top, so I can put it on the bottom in my other fraction. One mile equals 5,280 feet. <clears throat> so I know with 5,280 over three when I multiply that top and bottom, so five, 5280, fraction button 3 on the bottom, 
gives me 1,760 feet. 1,760. All right, 40 fluid ounces. That's fluid, not feet ounces. Fluid ounces times fluid ounces on the bottom, cups on the top. All right, we said that one cup equals eight fluid ounces, correct? So I end up with 40 over eight, which is gonna equal five. Six ounces times, my ounces go on the bottom, LB on the top. Um, we've seen that one pound equals 16 ounces. All right, so I have six over 16. This is when that fraction button comes in handy. Six fraction button 16 gives us three over eight. Three over eight. Hey, can you hit this to Miss Sonic here? Because I forgot. With all the crazy schedules, I did forget. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number 14, we have five tons. Oh, I forgot to mark my measurements out there. There we go. Five tons, tons are on the bottom, pounds are on the top. We said one ton is 2,000 pounds. Five times 2,000 gives me 10,000. Number 15, remember, if there are three numbers, we've got to do that backwards C. So four times eight is 32 plus five is? 37 over 8, keep my T on top, T on the bottom, LB on the top. So we end up with 1 ton, 2,000 pounds there, all right? So when I multiply 37 times 2,000, I get 74,000 over 8, 74,000. I'm going to use my fraction button over 8. And that simplifies nicely to 9,250. 9,250. Ooh, two more lines. Maybe we can make it. Yes. All right. So next one, I have 48 fluid ounces. Thank you, Chris. Times fluid ounces. Let me make sure it closes all the way for me. Move the magnet out of the way. All right. So I know that one cup equals eight fluid ounces. So I'm going to end up with 48 over 8, which is going to be 6 cups. 25 cups times cups and pints. Um, one pint is 2 cups, because each prince has 2 cups. My cups go away, leaving with pints. So I get 25 over 2. That's not something easy to do in my head. My calculator can do that very quickly, making it a fraction. Push enter, it changes it for me to 12 and a half. A lot of us could probably do that quickly in our heads as well. All right? 18, doing the backwards C. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. I get 9 over 4, making sure to put my T on top. 1 ton equals 2,000 pounds. All right, so I end up with 18,000 over 4 which was simplified to 4,500 pounds. All right, Whew, this one's big. 450,000 4, pounds times, my LB goes on the bottom, tons on top, 2,000 over one. So I'm doing, when I work that out, I end up with 4, 450,000 over 2,000. We can actually type that in our calculator just like that. One, two, three, over two. All right, and I end up with 225. Again, my calculator does the hard stuff for me. All right, on the calculator portion of the test, we're gonna use that calculator to help us out where we can. All right, number 20, I have 10 cups times my cups on the bottom, fluid ounces on the top. All right, we know that one cup equals eight fluid ounces, so I end up with 80 there. 4,578 feet times feet on the bottom, yards on the top. One yard is three feet, so I end up with 4,578 so I end up with 1,526 on that problem. All right, we'll look at the back in just a moment. The back of this will be a sheet where you will not be allowed to use a calculator. So we'll look at that one 
without a calculator, please.